not even having to do with organic. Um, the USDA regulates that it has to say on the label if it's antibiotic free and if it's hormone free. That has to be on the label. As if it might be negative then? Yes. I think there's some, I was just asking because I think there's some confusing labels out there where it's not really a That might be a yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Antibiotic free is one of the really, uh, over questionable, questionable ones. So when you, you know, if you watch the TEDx talk, it covered that pretty well, you know, in that topic, but it's not got a lot of regulation behind it, so it can mean a really large number of things, and I'm sure there is a difference between raised and, you know, so I think it's one of those labels that you really, um, you know, if the choice between that and that thing, it might be, you know, what makes you feel good, but I don't know, but it doesn't have a lot behind it. And I also think it's a little bit dangerous to, I feel like there's a little trend to saying that organic is vegetables is, is more trustworthy and then it gets a lot hairy with meat, but I think it's equally hairy with meat. I mean, there's, a few years ago, Green Gone Wrong came out, which is a great book, and talks all about organic raw cane sugar that I think a lot of people are really proud they're buying this raw sugar that's has an organic label. And, you know, like, the animal welfare group was talking about, the conditions are really not what you would want them to be. They're basically monocropping, they're, they do use pesticides, so I think that putting your faith in the USDA organic label fully, also without checking for vegetables or meat or anything, is, is also not, you know, you can't just feel confident because that label's there. Sure, and that's where I think a lot of these distinctions come into play when you're looking at organic and you're looking at different categories, you really do have to, um, to look at each one very closely. Yeah. Hi. Uh, well, we have a committee where we don't even have most of the options, so we don't have to have that free switch and we don't have to have free switch. So can you say a few words about the price differential? Like, how does it, you know, what, how much more does it cost to get foods that are labeled in this place? I was going to repeat the question and then um, let Dan maybe speak to that. The question is, if you live in a place where you really don't necessarily have access to a lot of the claims the claim or the labels we're even talking about, it's almost a luxury to be um, like demystifying these labels. Uh, what's the price differential um, when you have some of these labels? And I think talking maybe a bit about the USDA sale and, and also animal welfare approved and um, the pricing involved in those, in those structures. Sure. So, I mean, from my perspective, as a small manufacturer, the cost of involved certifications is expensive, uh, especially when we're interested in, in producing a quality product and buying quality ingredients. We have to pay premiums for those and then you stack onto that cost of certifications. And it, it happens to me all the time. I was demoing in, in Whole Foods a couple weeks ago and a person walks up to, to me and says, is this organic? And I say, yes. And then they turn around and say, why is it so expensive? And I'm like, oh, if you only understood what it costs and the amount of, and not just the certification fees, but the amount of work that goes, that has to go into tracking the things that are required for these certifications as far as like the paperwork and tracking how much coffee did you buy from where, and what did it go into, on what days, and can you verify. Like, for our certification, you have to be able to pull a package off the shelf at Whole Foods. They come to our facility and say, okay, tell me when it's, when it's back. Oh, and... You know, when you roast 200,000 pounds of coffee a year, to pull one pound off the shelf and put the data on it and say, okay, this is what went into that package can be kind of challenging. Um, we're a very small company. We don't have barcodes and track everything. Um, and those costs add up. And then on top of that, you have the pressure of the market with the consumer saying, oh, this product is too expensive. It gets really, really tough. Um, so, you know, I find myself in situations where I'm visiting producers and they ask me if they should get certified and I say, are you selling all of your product at a premium price? If they say yes and they're doing all the things that they're supposed to do to need certifications, why would I ask them to pay the money? I don't know. It's, it's, it gets really, really challenging. Really, really challenging. Yeah, and I think a good follow-up question um, for Bridget is, is just to talk about some of the certifiers and nonprofit organizations that have come up in uh, kind of out of this question is how are small producers supposed to pay for all these certifications? Um, the, the organic seal is very, very costly and then that's passed on to the consumer. So animal welfare approved is a free... Yeah, and, and that's why we're, but at least one of the reasons why we're free. We mean, outside of just wanting to stay independent, not having a financial relationship with the farmers, we want, to, we want the farmers, farmers to be able to get all of that money back and to be able to sell 
sell their product. I mean, we want the products to be affordable, but we also want the, the farmers to get the price for doing the extra work, for going through the certification, for raising their animals uh, in, according to all of these guidelines. And um, I mean, in terms of like the price difference, I mean, I've, I've gone around to all the stores to compare. You know, this is what an animal for a food day costs, and this is what just an organic day costs. This is what a conventional egg, a conventional egg. For. They're scary cheap. I mean, you shouldn't be paying two dollars for or less than two dollars for this thing. So I mean, um, between like DC and New York City, you're probably looking at between four and eight dollars for a dozen eggs um, for animal fur fringe eggs. And some people are like <gasps> horrified, certainly at the eight dollar eggs, but you could get eggs that really uh, you know, that are don't have any of the the regulations that we're looking for that aren't really maturation. You can get them in the supermarket for for like eight fifty. So I mean, it's all it's all over the map. Um, but we're actually trying to help our farmers get the great price, but actually reducing it a little bit for the, the consumers by grouping the farms and trying to get them to New York City, get taking them from Western New York, bringing them down here, because our costs might be a little bit less. Um, but you know, if we can help with that supply chain in, in order to make things more affordable. If I can jump into it, I think this is a really interesting thing about what you were saying about um, what is we're going to focus on, like how do we as consumers deal with these issues, and it, it's really interesting because as a consumer I do look for that label, but then at the same time as a buyer, there, I have this really, there's tension in that relationship, and it, it is challenging, especially talking about the cost and the availability, and it gets really interesting because the way that our food system is set up, it's so complex, it's really hard for us to wade through a lot of these things. Um, I had something really pertinent to say, I lost it there, sorry. One last note to talk about that. Um, it's interesting with the, the organic, so there are some other labels to mention. One is, um, is certified naturally grown, and that's um, kind of a peer review that farmers are doing. Um, there are hundreds of farms in New York and, and the Northeast, but around the country who are um, using this seal so that they can go around having to pay the high costs of USDA organic, um, but they are they're tracking each other. It's a peer review where farms can't can't crisscross. They can't just swap a verification um, one farm for the other to keep up the integrity of the program. Um, but it's it is a seal that has something behind it, even though it doesn't have the USDA organic label seal in that. Um, so I think that there are those labels popping up that once you look into them, they, they truly have some regulations behind them. The tricky thing with that is that, you know, the lesser known labels, we work with a couple of small suppliers who are trying to bring into our stores who, um, you know, they want to sell their, their vegetables, this is a frozen product um, from Hudson Valley, they want to sell their vegetables at the organic price but they can't put the USDA seal on there. It's really difficult for us as a retailer to not be able to tell the consumer that it's an organic product but sell it at an organic price. So there come a lot of, of issues and intricacies that are tough across, I think, every one of our steps of, of the food process. So it, it does come back to price in a lot of areas. If um, I can't say that really quickly, that's exactly, you brought it right around to what I was thinking about um, to you is that the reason why I think organic has so much criticism is because it has become so prominent and so powerful with consumers. And on, on the producer side, it's so expensive and, so, and sometimes difficult to work with, even though we go through all the steps to meet it. And then on the retailer side, there are all these other issues. So, and that's why it gets really hard. And I think that's why organic gets so much criticism. I think it is a really valuable certification, and it means a lot to me. Um, but it, it gets some criticism because it's so in the spotlight, and it is, it's challenging, and the whole system is challenging. Have a hard time even meeting that. Right. Or, or they, if, if, and like I said, if you're selling yeah. all your tomatoes at a premium price and you don't have to spend $5,000 a year on organic certification, why would you just spend $5,000 out of your pocket for that label? Sure. Uh, I have a question, but what really is the, the regular, because I've heard also that that, or, that the way that it works is like a couple of people who are like really laid back like come in twice a year, a couple times a year to the farm and kind of like look around and that it's not really, that, that the farmers don't really have to be, have to be organic in order to get labeled, that it's more about the 
money coming into the USDA than it is about, about actual attention to what's going into the food. I, I mean, I guess I can speak to that. I think that that's kind of, that's probably not the best characterization of the process. I don't know it in and out. Um, there are, there's, it's an extensive certification process, and I, I don't think that the ultimate goal is just to make more money. Um, but, of course, then maybe you look into the certified natural raised, and Jack and I have more to say on this, um, and, and you feel like there's an equal attention being paid to these, these practices, and you can, you can feel good and trust that seal, and you don't have to then pay the premium price. I mean, all I can say is Just Food has a network of 30, 40 plus local farmers, and the ones that do go through the organic certification process, that's not what they say. You know, I think that as much as it's a financial burden, there's this huge bureaucratic and record keeping burden that they have too, similar to the, the um, you know, having to have the provenance of each product. Like they have to keep all their receipts for all the different added, um, you know, if they're getting soil amendments, they have to have those certified organic. If they're getting seeds, they have to have those certified organic, and they have to keep all those records. So I think it's it's not really that easy. There may be a couple certifiers out there that have a more casual, laid back attitude about it, but um, a lot of the farms in our network opt out of organic certification as much because of the headaches as it is because of the, um, the cost. And that's kind of the benefit of them having an actual relationship with their community because the people go to the farm, they see the farm practices and they're, they don't, you know, then, then the label becomes optional because they've actually seen how the farm is managed. Yeah, so absolutely. Meeting and talking to the person that you're buying your food from is a really good way to get these answers um, to your questions pretty quickly. Um, and I, that's something we talked about at the break is that the bureaucracy and the paperwork and all the work and labor that goes into getting some of these verifications just aren't, aren't possible for, for small producers and that's part of the reason why they're not getting it even though their practices probably would fall under the umbrella. Uh, let's see. I was some wondering if
you mentioned that AWA does it cost the farm money for the certification process at school. I, I worked on a farm in Minnesota for a while and we were applying for Oregon Tilt certification, I think at that time. And, and one of the roadblocks I know for a lot of farms is that, I think we've all got the same, it's expensive. Um, how do you get, how, how are you funded? How do you, how, how, how do you pay people to go and certify? Sort of I'm just going to repeat the question so everyone can hear it. Um, how is an alum group funded? Uh, so we're a nonprofit. We have different funding streams. So we have money coming in. We have private donors. We have um, member donations from uh, you know, the, the nonprofit itself's been around since the early 50s. So there's lots of members just paying in their annual, you know, I don't get the newsletter, those sort of fees. So it's coming from different funding streams. But we're, we're totally independent. And the, I mean, it's just part of the mission to not charge farms to, in order to stay independent and to, to dedicate ourselves to family farmers. Are there other um, agencies that offer similar certifications? There are other animal welfare um, related or humane certifications out there. Uh, we're the, the only one that's not charging and with the focus of uh, the animals having to be raised out and pasture or range. I have um, some like charts that go through sort of the differences in those labels. I don't know if I have enough for the room, but I can, you know, I'm happy to hand them out to anyone interested and probably at the expo as well. <laughs> um, one thing we kind of wanted to circle back to is the question of, you know, like what is helpful out there? Um, what should you be doing as a consumer? I would say that the one thing, you know, while a lot of companies are, are coming out with ad campaigns and messaging, um, because there's such a demand for transparency, you're seeing a lot more um, interaction with, with food manufacturers, with brands, with labels, and um, of course, a surge in farmers markets. So you really have the opportunity now to meet the people either growing your food, raising your livestock, um, you have people behind the products. You know, most of us here are not the ones on the farms or um, growing the crops here or raising the animals. Uh, product on our shelves, but we do really have that connection. And um, in our stores, you know, I really encourage you to come in and ask, you know, a uh, team member in our produce department, does he know about, um, you know, Red Jacket Orchards? Tell me a little bit about this farm. That to me is a, is a huge difference now that you can get and you can benefit from both, you know, directly from a farmer in, in one of our stores if they're in there, um, at an event that Urban Farm is at, or at a farmer's market or a green market. But also just from the, the people involved in um, in these products, I see Brea from Organic Valley. You know, like there are people that are connected to all of these people who can tell you a lot about the farms and where their products come from and give you that trust that maybe you're still a little bit skeptical of from their labels. So that's one suggestion I would say, and one resource that we have because of this demand. There's time for one more question. Okay, we have time for one more one last question. Oh, sure. Well, just to sort of piggyback on what you said, uh, um, so I just moved out to West Harlem, where I'm not no longer walking distance from my Whole Foods, and I'm wondering, like, if you could give some thoughts on for a lot of people who don't have access to Whole Foods, you know, or for a lot of Americans who shop at Walmart on a weekly basis, like, is there going to be this growing disparity between those who are really educated and are able to, like, you know, talk to people at their supermarket where they go to most frequently and like find out about the local orchard, you know, between, you know, there's going to be those groups of folks versus those folks who are just trusting that the commercial they see about Lay's potato chips being natural and, you know, local, you know, Idaho grown is really something that's actually trustworthy. Wow. <laughs> That's a big question. Um, I think it's yes and no. I will say one thing that's kind of encouraging about you know the Walmarts of the world, they did just come out with this labeling system called Good For You um, that has a lot of health criteria attached. You know, you as a consumer would want to see each piece that's not into that, but the fact that they're taking that step and as the largest retailer in the country, um, making those things available to maybe customers who otherwise wouldn't be looking for it at all, I think that's a step in the right direction. Um, and yes, it, I think there still is a pretty, pretty major difference. Um, but 